Good evening and welcome to the 2021 Scholastic Art Awards Ceremony. I'm Kim Austin and your host for tonight. We're here to celebrate all of your accomplishments and talk all of your amazing work. This presentation is being recorded and will be posted to Sullivan County Police's website so it can be shared later on with anybody who might have missed it. This year has been extra challenging and we are truly grateful for all of your hard work and talents. The pandemic may have changed the way we celebrate your awards, but we are still here to share your art with our community, families, and teachers. I would like to take this opportunity to thank everyone who helped make the program such a success. The Orange County Arts Council for helping us find professional artists to adjudicate the art submissions, all the teachers who encourage our students to participate in the arts and for all the behind the scenes work that you guys do. A special thanks to our scholastic committee members, Janet Ferreira of the Middletown and Large City School District, Maria DeWald of Duchess Boses, Susan Zier's Tiefel from Sullivan Boses, Sarah McKay from the Orange Arts Council, and Jessica Frankie from Sullivan Boses. I could not have done this without everyone's help and expertise. So on behalf of our Hudson Valley Alliance, thank you for all of your time, help, and support. We have a special guest tonight. In 2005, he graduated from the Parsons School of Design and Fine Art Illustration. After graduation, he freelanced for several clothing companies, worked as a graphic designer, and for a lighting fixture company. Today, he currently resides in the Hudson Valley. He's a freelance artist and well-known in the education community for his murals and work with students. So please give a warm welcome to Joe Pimentel. All right, thank you, thank you so much. Um, so what I'd like to do is uh, show you a slideshow, slideshow presentation of the journey of how I became a muralist. Um, as early as drawings that I did when I was five, six years old up until now, which I'm 39 years old, uh, and show you how I became a full-time uh, artist throughout all those years through a lot of hard work and uh, most of all, patience. Uh, so let me get this uh, slideshow set. Make sure you can see everything. Okay. So and like- uh, One who can't see Joe's screen just because he is sharing his presentation with you, just please put it in the chat box. But I believe everyone should be seeing it as I'm seeing it on my end. Okay. All right. So uh, again, thanks a lot. And congratulations to everybody that's a uh, part of this uh, ceremony and event. I've heard about the Scholastic Awards for many years since I was a substitute teacher up to when I would go to the, to the schools to do the collaborations. And um, it's a big deal and um, best of luck for everything from your future, for your future. So like I mentioned before, um, I wanna show you like uh, a lot of my artwork that I've created. Um, I was born in White Plains, New York, and I moved up to the Hudson Valley when I was eight years old to the town of Newburgh. Uh, both my parents are from South America, my father being from Peru and my mother being from Brazil which they both met in design school in the mid seventies, which both of them were a big inspiration for me and my two other brothers. So as early as I can remember in the drawings that I found, uh, a big inspiration for me was when I was five, six years old, around 1987, 88, when the Ninja Turtles came out. So this is one of my few uh, drawings that I used to do, like uh, constantly. Uh, my mother would always tell me, do a lot of copying, copy what you love to draw. If it's cartoons, copy a ton of drawings, ton of cartoons. So that's what I did. As I got a little older, 11, 12 years old, kept copying, kept working on Looney Tunes, other characters. And um, I asked her why one day, can you draw me something? Because I've seen her draw, but never actually saw, saw her do a full render drawing. And she created Magneto for, from X-Men. From there, I said, I want to be an artist. I want to be a comic book artist or something and get this good. And she told me, you get there as long as you practice and put in the hard work. Otherwise, it'll never happen. You have to put in the time. So that's what I did. Um, in uh, late elementary, junior high, kept practicing, kept focusing on cartoons and comic books, using different mediums eventually with markers, color pencil, crayon, anything I got my, got my hands on. And around the time when I was in eighth grade, I decided to stop copying. Even around this time, I was only focused on creating uh, work from other people's art. In so many ways, I was doing fan art. Wasn't drawing from reality or anything. I was mainly drawing from other people's drawings. So I decided to stop doing that and start drawing from my imagination, using basic shapes and forms and morphing them together. In the beginning, 
didn't make any sense, but I wanted to see where this would take me. What happens if I morph these, morph these shapes together and create these kind of like creature beings of some sort and having all, all these shapes morph together and trying to make sense out of it. All of my notebooks in school were all filled with drawings. Um, and senior year, I decided I want to go to art school. I want to get better at drawing. I did a year of Orange County Community College and then eventually transferred to Parsons School of Design. And when I got to Parsons, I got a really wake, a real wake up call because I had to force myself to draw from life, draw from reality and draw. We would go to the Metropolitan Museum of Arts and draw uh, from sculptures. I'm not sure why there's a red line on the screen, uh, but whatever. Um, so we would copy a lot, constantly work from life, from, from other, also other uh, master's drawings. And then um, I developed a different style and started rendering a lot better and, and stopped from my actual drawings and then eventually came back to it afterwards. When I graduated from 2005 uh, from Parsons with illustration degree, I then was out in the world figuring out what I'm gonna do with my art career. So I then went back to my old drawings, well, became newer drawings, and then learned, used what I learned from art school, combining of what I did in the past. And then started really putting these shapes together, then morphing them inside of animals or people. Here are just some of the styles that I created after college, just to show you how it developed from going to art school, from learning the basic forms. And throughout the years, I worked many different uh, places. Uh, this is when I would work at, we used to work at Dia Beacon. I was there for a total of eight years on and off as a gallery attendant, uh, art handler, security guard, parking lot attendant, you name it. I did everything there. But whatever I did, whatever job I was at, I always carried a sketchbook with me. Constantly doodling, doodling drawing, getting better, not sure where it's going, but I just had to keep doing it, knowing that there's something greater down the road that it would lead me to. Um, one of the jobs that was uh, not knowing that was very rewarding that helped me out in the future was when I became a substitute teacher, uh, learning a totally different kind of art, speaking with children and seeing also the same kind of fire in their eyes when they started creating, whether it being drawing or writing or singing or whatever. But how do you hold on to that as a kid to follow that as you get older, to see what happens when you give your 100 percent putting in those hours? years later. So I kept working on my designs, kept drawing to see what would happen. And I would submit to different gallery shows, coffee shops, wherever, just to get my work out there. And um, even some of the cool jobs that I did was uh, working at the Rise of the Jack-O-Lantern, which we would design and carve on these giant pumpkins that weigh from 80 pounds to 150 pounds. And it would take me about four hours to illustrate and then another four hours to actually carve. 2012 was when my life completely changed. Another artist, a friend of mine from Beacon named Rick Price asked me to collaborate with him on a mural at a restaurant called Tito Santana's. This was the actual sketch before the painting. We combined both our, both our drawings together. I drew a lot of the sugar skulls. He drew the giant skull on the left. We created mariachi bands, flowers on the windows, everything. Once the design was approved, we, got, we went and started painting. We painted from 8 p.m. all the way until midnight every day for about two months while we were working our full-time jobs. I believe Rick at the time was working uh, as a roofer and I was at uh, Dia Beacon. Um, during that summer, I think I was on the roof cleaning the, the mud off the roof, I'm not sure. But either way, we come back, go at nighttime and start painting. Very intimidating in the beginning because I thought I would take forever. My usual paintings were no bigger than 11 by 17 or 18 by 24, which took months to complete. Now we had to create this giant 30 plus mural in a couple months. And at the end, we completed it. Oh, wow. Now, now this job here led to so much work afterwards because we put our website information on the wall. And then from there, a um, couple years later, a producer from Marvel Comics Books reached out to me and asked me to do a live painting on, on, his, uh, on, on wood of uh, Daredevil and Iron Fist, which was coming out on Netflix at the time. Year after, he asked me to do a live mural uh, to promote the um, spider drone for the uh, Spider-Man Homecoming, which turned into like a three-minute video that you can see on YouTube. Many jobs afterwards, um, 
like this, for instance, a person walked in, Tito, saw my information, asked me to do a giant mural in their basement for their kids. So this took me about a month to complete. And a lot of work started happening while I was still working my other jobs. Uh, I did this over here at Melzinga down in Beacon as well. And just to show you different type of styles where it doesn't have to be loud colors all the time. The colors could then flow with the actual uh, atmosphere of the restaurant. Uh, this one here at the Vinyl Room in Wappingers, where I did something a little different by um, creating these wood cutouts of Sade and um, Erica Badu, and then mounting it on the wall with the painting on the background. We also did the same thing a few year, uh, years ago at the Children's Home in Poughkeepsie. Last year, uh, this was right before the pandemic uh, at Howl Cavern, they contacted me to do a 60-foot uh, mural at the Glasswork studio of a giant dragon blowing an abstract glass out to the other end. It took me about five days to complete. So one of the, the things that I love to do the most uh, that I found very rewarding is mural collaborations. Uh, two summers ago in Beacon Memorial Park, I worked with the whole community, with pretty much anyone who signed up from a uh, seven-year-old to grandparents. Sign up, and we paint for about 45 minutes at a time to complete this giant mural that I designed of hybrid Hudson Valley animals, where the animals may look like an animal that you recognize, but they're kind of transforming into something else completely. Just to give it something new to look at, where this wolf coyote is transforming into the landscape of the Hudson Valley. And then these giant owl eyes once you're driving down that road. And around 2013 is when it all started with the school murals. I got contacted by a school, and then they asked me to do a school mural collaboration with the fifth grade students. And um, this kicked off a whole new career while I was still working other jobs, where I would do the whole design and students would submit their drawings to be incorporated in the theme. So the students would do all the actual paintings where I would lay it out like a giant coloring book, building it day by day and we usually complete it within five days. And at the end of the day, I usually come in and touch it up, add the outline to make it really pop out. But at the end, it's all the students that help put this together to give them ownership of these murals. So they can walk by every day and say, I help put this together and seeing the process of how it's created from beginning to end. This led to so many murals afterwards, uh, where we did one here at Poughkeepsie High School of an interactive uh, wing mural where you stand in front of where it looks like these giant wings are coming out of your arms. We then took the silhouettes of the students and they created a whole new mural using these inspiring words with these transformative shapes all over. And then the year after, removing the faces and the words and making it just about the shapes, transforming in this part of the hallway where you walk by and the mural means something different to everyone as they walk by. There's no literal meaning to it. It's how you feel when you see it. What does it make you feel every day or throughout the whole year? So a lot of the murals that I create, we can use the basic theme of kindness. How different can we make it where each mural is personal to the school and with the students able to, uh, to contribute to it where it becomes completely different. Even with this one here we did in Washingtonville, Taft Elementary uh, last year, where I did a photo shoot of the students. I created them into silhouettes and they all submitted different uh, self-portraits where I added right in the background of the rainbow where the heart is. Um, so yeah, we, we can go by using just the mascot and then having the drawings transform out of there just to give them ownership of it to see where this can go, where it becomes a uh, yearly tradition. Uh, this one is at Monticello uh, Middle School that I did over the summer of uh, just using the Jaguar and then adding all these transformative shapes, combining uh, with the words leading down from the entrance way. Um, so every school has a different mural, can be the same theme, but completely different at the same time. A lot of them, like this one can be one that you can stand in front of and take a photo of with this mandala. And the other one as well, which I, which I did over uh, in December. Uh, but the one I tell, what I tell the kids the most is what you get out of this is patience, focus, and hard work. And to follow your dreams of whatever it may be. Even students that are not even artists help put this together. Just to show them, well, whatever you love to do, it's going to take time and put that hard work in. And um, in 2016, I actually quit my full-time job 
uh, where I was working at a design firm in Cranberry, New Jersey, which was a two and a half hour commute one way. I would drive in five hours a day plus traffic and weather for a year and a half. But I decided to take that big leap and quit my job and go 100% with this uh, mural business. So I contacted every single school in the Hudson Valley, New Jersey, Connecticut, wherever, to see if they were interested in doing this mural collaboration with the students. And um, since then, I've been, I've been so busy throughout the years. This actually worked. But I had to take that chance, take that big sacrifice to make that happen. So whatever you do, whatever, whatever you are passionate about, your ideas may change, which is fine, you know, but whatever, whatever creative uh, spirit that you have in there, just to follow it, to see where it can lead you. May not happen today or tomorrow, not 20 years from now, but you'll never know unless you try and uh, stick with it. So I wish you the best of luck. Uh, thank you so much for uh, having me share this with you. And uh, Hi everyone, and to all of the Gold Key, Silver Key, and Honorable Mention Award winners in the 2021 Scholastic Art and Writing Awards, congratulations. My name is Chris Wisniewski, and I'm the Executive Director of the Alliance for Young Artists and Writers, which is the nonprofit organization that presents the Scholastic Art and Writing Awards. Today's winners are joining an extraordinary and diverse group of past award recipients, people like Andy Warhol, Kay Walking Stick, Stephen King, and Shabalala Self. Today, you become a part of a nearly century-long tradition, but you're doing so in a year unlike any other. Despite the unprecedented challenges that 2020 has brought, each and every one of you has looked within yourselves and found the courage to express yourself through your art and writing, and that's what you're being recognized for today. That's no small feat. And so once again, I say congratulations. I also want to thank all of the educators, administrators, parents, grandparents, family members who have encouraged you along the way. The Scholastic Art and Writing Awards are a vast national undertaking, and they're only possible because of the exceptional effort of our affiliate partners all over the country who run regional programs, our dedicated staff in New York City, the leadership of our board of directors, and the many supporters who make our work possible. To all of you, I express my sincerest gratitude. Today is a day to celebrate this year's winners, but the tradition of the Scholastic Awards continues. So to all of you who are in seventh to 11th grade, who will still be eligible for the awards next year, I encourage you to apply to the 2022 Scholastic Art and Writing Awards next fall. Thanks so much, and one last time, congratulations. Hello, my name is Robin Talbot, and I'm from the Wappinger Central School District. The National Scholastic Headquarters is located in New York City and established the Scholastic Art Awards in 1923. For 98 years, Scholastic has recognized the vision, ingenuity, and talent of our nation's youth. They have provided opportunities for students' voices to be heard through their artwork and to be celebrated in the spring each year in New York City. Congratulations, everybody. You made it. Hello, my name is Susie Brassard from the Cornwall Central School District. The Scholastic Art Awards are eligible for all students 13 to 18 years of age in grades 7 through 12. The adjudication criteria our judges are looking for are originality, technical skill, and emergence of personal vision or voice. Student artwork is judged separately in two age groups. The first group are middle school students, which includes grades 7 and 8, and our high school group is compiled of grades 9 through 12.
Hi, my name is Jillian Barnes from the Millbrook Central School District. There are 17 artwork categories, architecture and industrial design, ceramics and glass, comic art, design, digital art, drawing and illustration, editorial cartoon, expanded projects, fashion, film and animation, jewelry, mixed media, painting, photography, printmaking, sculpture, and art portfolio. Congratulations to all the winning artists and their teachers.
Hello, my name is John Carruthers from the Storm King School. Each category of artwork is judged by 12 to 15 independent professional artists experienced in the category they adjudicate. The judging is considered a blind adjudication, which means no school information, student names, or ages are released to the judges. The artwork is judged based only on the title of the work, materials, and dimensions of the piece. The blind adjudication process takes about two days or 15 hours to complete for our region. So don't worry about who you are, where you're from, your background or your foreground. Just try your best, have some fun and good luck. Hello, my name is John Larson from Sullivan County BOCES. The Hudson Valley Art Alliance is in its 12th year and we began our partnership with Scholastic Art Awards in the 2008 to 2009 school year. At that time we had 400 students art submissions. During the 2019 to 2020 school year we have received over 3,400 art submissions even with the challenges that 2020 has brought our way. The program continues to grow and provide opportunities to highly talented students across the region. We are proud to be one of over 100 regional alliances across the U.S. I would also like to congratulate all those who participated in this wonderful program. It's artists like you that keep our program running, and uh, it's inspirational to see all of your work during this time. Thank you.
name is Mary Ellen Iotropoulos, and I'm from The Artifact in Poughkeepsie, New York. And each year, the Scholastic Arts Awards present students with opportunities for scholarships at all grade levels. And some of the categories include artwork that represents current events, social events, political events, human-created climate change, and portfolio submissions. Original expression, personal voice, and opinion are highly regarded at the Scholastic Awards. And by submitting to Scholastic, you're making an investment in yourself and in your future as an artist, and I really commend you for it. So, society needs your creativity and your passion more than ever, and I am so glad that you have decided that you are going to be submitting to Scholastic this year. Thank you for your original artistic vision and voice and for sharing it with the world. Hello, my name is Susie Ears Tebow from Sullivan County BOCES. The Scholastic Arts Awards is proud to call artist Andy Warhol, photographer Zach Posen, sculptor, Robert Redford, actor, and Ken Burns, filmmaker, among some of its well known and iconic alumni. Congratulations to all the winners tonight. You have now entered into the prestigious Alumni Association of the Scholastic Arts Awards. To the student winners, thank you for persevering and sharing your artistic talents during this difficult time.